Welcome to the Supply Depot for the United States Sanitary Commission. We are a civilian volunteer organization dedicated to the health and welfare of the soldier. At the beginning of the war, civilians wanted to be able to help the war effort, but there was no mechanism for them to do that. So civilians out of New York City go to Washington, D.C. to go ask Abraham Lincoln to officially recognize them as an entity to help with the war. Now realize at this point in time, Abraham Lincoln believes that the war is going to go in last three months. He also believes that this should be a military effort and a military effort only. So when these civilians show up in his office, he tries to get them to go away. He keeps sending them off to his various cabinet members, but they keep coming back. So on June 9, 1861, he officially recognizes us as the United States Sanitary Commission. He does this to make us go away. He refers to us as the fifth wheel of a coach, because he thinks we're going to be about that effective. He figures that the war won't last long enough for us to do anything, and we will just go away and cease to exist. Well, just as much as he underestimated the length of the war, he underestimated what a large organization of dedicated women and a few dedicated men can do. Now the first thing that happens is the men go out to inspect the military camps for sanitary conditions. Now I realize the men are doing this because women are not allowed in the camps. And what the men find in, this, in the camps absolutely shocks them. What they find is these men know nothing about setting up a sanitary camp. The soldiers were taking their leftover food and just throwing it out the front of the tent and leaving it there. And if that wasn't bad enough, the men were doing their business pretty much anywhere they wanted. Out of the front of the tent, on the side of the tent, behind the tent, it didn't seem to matter. The uh, result? Many of the men were getting sick. Now you can't fight a war with sick men. So the Sanitary Commission steps in and starts providing long, lengthy reports to the camp commanders on how to fix the sanitary commission conditions. Now realize, we are civilians. They don't need to pay attention to anything that we say. So many of the camp commanders ignored our recommendations. But those that implemented our recommendations found out that not only were their camps cleaner, their men were healthier, and that was important. So before too long, most camp commanders are following the recommendations of the Sanitary Commission. Now that's what's keeping the men busy, and the women are home, and they're busy looking for things to do. And then they start noticing something. Ladies from all over the North are getting together in their communities and trying to send things to their soldiers. What they would do is they'd get a railroad car and they'd fill it with clothing and blankets and food. Now realize these ladies didn't know anything about military life, and so the food that they were putting in these railroad cars were what they typically made for dinner that night, which would be soups and stews and roasted chickens and milk and eggs fresh vegetables, fruit, pies, it all went in these railroad cars, and typically in glass containers. And they'd send the railroad cars off down the railroad tracks. Now, if you know anything about railroad cars, you know that they bounce a lot. Before too long, all those glass containers broke, and there was food and liquid all over the insides of railroad cars. Well, that wasn't the worst of it. These railroad cars had no priority with the military and so they were getting sidetracked for two and three weeks. It is summer. It is hot. Just imagine what those railroad cars were like when they finally got them into camp and opened them up. The stench was overwhelming. All they could do was just shovel everything out. Nothing was usable. The Sanitary Commission decided they had to do something about this. So what they decided to do is they established 10 distribution centers across the north. And they told the various ladies' aid organizations, and there's about 7,000 of them, to send all their donated items to one of these 10 distribution centers, where they will be unpacked, sorted, and repacked, and sent to where they're needed. Now, this works really well. The military is now getting the supplies that they need, and the ladies are spending their time doing the things that are necessary to support the Sanitary Commission. Before too long, though, things change. The battle first bull run occurs. Men lay down on the battlefield for two and three days without anything to eat, without anything to drink. Many died just because they had nothing to drink. 
Sanitary Commission stepped in and said, we've got to do something about this. So what they decided to do is they decided to design and supply their own ambulances, railroad cars, and hospital transport ships to get the men off the battlefield farther up north to more permanent hospitals. Now this works really well for us. We're now getting the men off the battlefield and to where they can get the assistance they need. But then we discover something else that's kind of interesting about the military, and that is how they select nurses. The military goes in to a ward where men are getting over being injured and sick, and they look around the ward trying to find the healthiest man. Oh, hey, sir, you look pretty healthy. We'll make you the nurse. You get to take care of the rest of the men in the ward. Needless to say, that didn't provide very good nursing care. So the women start thinking about this and they go, wait a minute, we nurse our men when they are at home. We know how to be nurses, so we can go be the nurses in the hospital. And the ladies start showing up at the hospitals to be nurses. And the surgeons are horrified. You can't have ladies in the hospitals. That's just not done. It's not proper. The men are not fully clothed. You can't have ladies in here. Well, that did not stop these ladies. And they decided if they couldn't be nurses, they would do something to make a difference. And they start doing things like cleaning up the wards. Well, the surgeons start noticing that the wards where the ladies are, the men are starting to get healthier sooner. And they start thinking, maybe it's not so bad to have these ladies as nurses. Not really sure what it is about the ladies, but you know, maybe it's that mothering that they give. Whatever the reason is, it seems to make, be making a difference. And the surgeons start accepting the nurses that are, that are women. So now we have the women in the hospital providing nursing care. And before too long, they're coming to the Sanitary Commission and saying, we've got a problem with the military diet. The basic military diet is salt pork and hardtack. And if you are of weak constitution and having digestional disorders, the last thing you're going to want is more salt pork and hardtack. They asked us to supply the things necessary for a sick diet, things that are easy on digestion systems. So we start supplying things like Farina. Farina makes a really good gruel. It's very easy on that digestion system. You probably know this as cream of wheat. We also start, uh, start supplying things like tapioca. Tapioca makes a very good, is put in a custard and it's very good and it's very easy on the digestion system. Other things start plaguing the soldiers because the war has gone on so long and because of the basic diet, many of the men start suffering from scurvy. They have no fruits and vegetables in their diet. And so the Sanitary Commission starts providing things like fruits and vegetables. And one of the ways we supply vegetables is desiccated vegetables. These are nothing more than dried vegetables. The men don't like them. They say they taste like hay. So they start calling them desecrated vegetables. We also supply something called concentrated lemonade. This is a new concept. It is nothing more than sugar with lemon juice put on it. The soldiers can put it in their canteen or it can be put in a pitcher and served to the soldiers. But it is one way for them to get the, the very necessary lemon juice that helps stop or prevent scurvy. So now we're providing a good diet to the hospitals and the women are busy at home and they're doing things like making bandages and lint. This is lint. It is the fuzz off from old clothing or the threads. The lint is put directly on the wound and they are making the bandages which are used to wrap that wound. They are making lint by the barrel full and bandages by the thousands. And still, no matter how much we do, it's never enough. There's always a need for more. Now the war continues on, and many of the women are starting to come to us, and they say, I can't volunteer anymore. I've lost my husband. I need to take care of my family. I need to go find some employment. 
I can't volunteer anymore. Well, Sanitary Commission decides they need to do something about this. They very much need the ladies' help in providing the things necessary to the hospitals. And so they come up with an idea. And they buy a bunch of fabric, they give the fabric to the ladies, and they ask them to sew the shirts that they need. They then pay the ladies for the shirts that they, are, that they provide. And so this works out really well for the Sanitary Commission because they get the shirts they need, the ladies get the employment they need. Except it creates a problem for the Sanitary Commission. Everything the Sanitary Commission has done has been based on donations and on fundraising. We get no help from the military or the government financially. We now need a lot more money to be able to pay these ladies. So we do the one thing that we know how to do, and that is go out and do fundraising. So the various ladies' aid organizations go out and start raising money. Unfortunately, though, the side effect of this is they're spending all their time raising money and not doing the other things that we need them to do. So two ladies in the distribution center in Chicago decide that they're going to do one big fundraising effort and earn enough money to support their distribution center for a full year. Now that's $25,000. That's a lot of money. So the ladies go to the men of the organization. Remember, men run the organization because ladies are not allowed to. They go to the men of the organization and ask permission to put on a fair. They said this fair will raise this $25,000. Well, the men think about it, and they kind of laugh about it a little bit. They said, you know, the fair is a good idea, but you're not going to raise $25,000. But we think it's worth the effort to do it, that you will raise some money. So go ahead, and you have our permission to put on this fair. Now, these ladies go to the bank to go borrow some money to be able to start this effort by doing some advertising and some preparation. And they ask the bank for a loan, and the bank tells them, we can't loan you the money. You need to send us your husbands. Your husbands can take out the loan. You can't. So these are fairly wealthy ladies and they say, well, okay, take the money out of our bank account. And the bank says, that money belongs to your husband, not you. Go ask your husband and if he gives permission, we will give you the money out of the bank account. So the ladies go home and explain the problem to their husbands. Their husbands go back with them to the bank and they take out the loan. Now, the bank allows the ladies to sign the loan papers, but that was only after their husbands had signed it because their signatures did not matter. And they did not count. Now the ladies have the money that they need to launch this effort, and they work really hard. They work for a couple of months, and when they put on this fair, this fair lasts two weeks. At the end of two weeks, these ladies have raised over $100,000. That's a lot of money. And the men of the organization are going, oh, this is a really a great e idea. Everybody should go out and have a sanitary fair. And they encourage all the large communities to have a large fair. Of course, there's a little bit of competition going on. Chicago has now set the, the level at $100,000. And each large city is trying to outdo the last large city. The second to the last large sanitary fair is held in Philadelphia. They raised just a little under a million dollars. The last large sanitary fair held is in Manhattan, and not to be outdone, they raised 1.2 million dollars. Now think about this organization. We refer to it as the fifth wheel of a coach, but we have gone out and we've improved the sanitary conditions of the camp. We've supplied, created. Uh, supply and distribution system. We have provided transportation to get the men off the battlefield farther up north to more permanent hospitals. We have provided nurses to the hospitals. We have provided a specialized diet to the hospitals. We have supplied employment for the women that need it. Pretty amazing for an organization that was referred to as the 